Hello, welcome back to Modern Ace Basics. I'm PG Tybotting, and today we're working on controls in the defensive action spectrum. Uh, before we get going, though, if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, and hit that bell notification to catch future videos so you don't miss anything. All right, here we go. All right, so continuing on from our defensive series so far, we've worked all the way from evading to passing through to actual downright blocking. Uh, and now we're working towards the other end of the spectrum, right? From evade, block, disarm, we're gonna work in between block and disarm. So before you can even disarm, normally you have to control them, right? You have to control them in some way that makes you be able to apply leverage so that now you can disarm them. For these controls, the simplest one that we all do um, it's natural is a grab, right? We can grab the stick, we can grab the wrist, we can grab different parts of things. So if I block and grab, that's all well and good, but there's a couple problems with that. If I grab anything, I'm kind of committed. I wrap my thumb and my fingers around um, and I'm kind of committed. So what you want to do is realize that when you're committed like that, it can be used against you. They can lock you up. You grab their stick, it can be used against you. You grab their wrist, they can still hit you, right? If you grab the stick such that you're trapping their hand on the stick, you can control the stick and their hand at the same time. So we'll show that in a bit. At the other end of the spectrum, you can control them by without actually maintaining uh, contact. So you can cat throw to the side. You can block and then knock them open and hit them, or you can block and knock them further closed and close in and strike. So then you're actually controlling with the inertia of the cast, right? But if you close them off, I can't reach if you did that to me, or if you casted me off this way, I might do that, but remember you're casting in a way that pushes me off balance. So if you cast it that way, be aware this punch could come. We'll show that as well. So those can be done at long, you know, medium range and uh, short range. Um, and then we have two other types, pressing of the limb or pressing the hand against their body. So kind of like jamming them and usually it's at the hip. Or you can also press it against your own body, right? So then your weight becomes something they have to deal with as you give them other things to deal with. So that would be clipping, right? I can clip just position of my hands, I can clip against my hips, I can clip against my shoulders, uh, and we'll show that in a little bit too. So basically it's grabs and casts are kind of the spectrum, and then you've got clipping, which is sort of in between. It's not a committed grab, it's a uh, limitation in the options for continued movement, right? There's only one or one or two ways out, right? They can't go forward, can't go down, can't go up, but they can go back. Or if I trap, if I push it against my body, they can pull out, but they can't go into me and they can't go out. And in the safely thing, if you're clipping against yourself, they're extended, right? To reach you. And that's good because you're stronger in on yourself, they're weaker out extended like that. So we'll show, we'll go on, we'll show those a little bit. All right, so as we show these, he's gonna attack me and I will talk about which ones I'm doing. So let's start with the grabs. If he comes in, say, with a forehand strike, I can grab, right? And grab the cane is what we typically do. If I grab high, I can go there, I can go straight to there, right? Boom, boom. Um, I can go in with a puño, but if he blocks, right, I can control him and slap that to the side, okay? So that's grabbing the cane. Um, same thing, if he comes in again, I wanna grab the wrist, I can go here, grab the wrist, right? Same thing, and that's more likely I'm gonna come into the puño, but I still could do the that guy, okay? But if I come in again there, bam, right? Okay, so that's gonna be the two grabs. I'll show you here in a second what I like to do, where I like to grab on the hand. So he just strikes here, bam. When you grab, I wanna grab here. So you notice that I'm grabbing between his hand and the stick. So now I can move the stick and I can move his wrist. Now I can do anything I want to, right? So anyway, I pop, I can still let go here, boom, okay? Um, but I have control here. Okay, it's gonna be easier to see on this other side. If he does a backhand strike, boom, and I grab that same place I wanna grab, what I can do is I can decide what I wanna do and he might be following with a punch. That doesn't matter because I could knock it to the side. Bam, right? Okay, so, and the same thing happens. I can come in out here, wham, wham, okay? So, he strikes, I grab that thumb, and I do whatever I want to do, right? You can still stay longer distance, right? So he comes in, backhand strikes, bam, I grab that same place, I strike that, and after I strike it, I go through, wham, okay? And finish off. I could just go, wham, okay? So when you have the control, you follow what you want, but the key is here to grab that stick around, or grab the hand around the stick, so we'll hold again. So I wanna show here, this hand is here, See where the thumb is? I'm gonna grab around that thumb and get there. Now I have control of the stick and I have control of the hand, okay? Could actually just decide to disarm that way. 
If you want to, you grab the wrist to do that, but you have to maintain control of the position of the wrist because if you don't, he's going to twist his wrist, hit me in the head. All right, same thing on the other side. Right in here, I am grabbing around, and what I'm doing here is I'm pinching this knuckle of the thumb into the stick. If you watch his face, he's not a happy camper. <laughs> All right, so that's what I want to do with the grab there. All right, back here. As I grab on those things, he does a strike. On this side, I have the choice of going high, right? And if he hits the hand, I hit the hand first, right? Bap, he, he tries to block, <laughs> I'll abort, hit the hand, hit him again, stab, right? Maybe come up here and do the disarm, okay? Whatever you want to do. All right, so, but you can also go above so you can hit low. So he does here again, I grab. Now I'm gonna grab over, right? Now I can get hit there. So it's where you wanna go. This is handy because it's always hard for him to block. Bam, he's gonna get a free hit there. I can close him off, finish him off, right? I can push, boom, and hit. And we'll talk about those casts later, but that's that's something we do there. But again, so I like to grab to where I trap the, the thumb around the stick. All right, so just a, a quick illustration there. Now for casting, it's the other end of the spectrum, like I said, so he does a forehand strike, bam. So I can cast a couple ways. Let's do the more obvious ways. I'm gonna come under here and cast it and strike immediately. So I threw it to the side there. I have to do it fast for you to understand the, the inertia going on here. But if I go here, I cast it wide open. Okay, I throw it, and while I throw it, I'm hitting. So here, he pops, boom, bam, okay, he's, and I finish him off. So you follow with more than one strike, but I'm just showing the entry. All right, I can cast it close, too, if he does a forehand strike. Go here, and I cast it slow. If I cast it close, he immediately turns his head. I like that, because then I get this feel right here, and I can hit, knock, and take him out. Same thing if he does a backhand strike. I go here, and I can still go, once I've stopped the force here, whether it's a brace block, a two-hand block, or even a single block that's followed by this guy, I can pop that there, and close him, and finish. Put that kidney, and then go back to the head, okay? Makes sense? So it's casting again. So what does it show? It's slow again. He goes here, boom, I block, whether it's braced, whether it's two-hand, whether it's pot gong, or whatever, and I pop this guy here. It hits it really hard, boom. So again, pop. And I, I, I jam that to close him, okay? Ideally, I do it at the same time. I'm here, wham, okay, boom. All right, so that's casting. You can do that at far distances and close distances. If I'm in here, he does a forehand strike, and I'm far away, and I just cast the stick, I'm hitting more medio, right? I'm hitting the body with the stick. I can't reach him with the puño or fist, okay? If I go in here and I do the same thing, I go here, wham. I hit the puño. Notice what well, you can't see. I'm stepping on his toe. I like to do that. That gives me more control over him. He's working with his balance a lot more, and I have a lot of options. Okay, wham. So it's just changing the range. You're still casting it no matter what. Um, this is related in balloon walk, so if he does a strike here, if I go here and I cast it, whew, I've immediately got that uh, sublique. On this side, there's not a really, I mean, there's casting, right? So I can, I can close it. That's not really casting. If he strikes this way, I can cast it and follow immediate strike. But okay, so we have, now we've got grabs, casting. Now we're gonna do some of the jamming. So now after grabbing and throwing, you're getting inertia control. So we have direct force on force control, that's a grab. And there's some uses for that. I, it's not my preferred way, but it is very natural. Then we go to the other end of the spectrum with kind of the throwing it aside, either throwing it to close them off or throwing it to get them open. You've got to prepare for either one of those. So that is going to be controlled by inertia, right? You, you throw it and they have to deal with that. So you throw it really hard and you're using your hips and immediately at the same time striking them. For the next one though, with the jamming, we got two lock, which is I'm jamming against his body, or we got clipping, which is I'm jamming him against my body somehow. So I'm just gonna show one for two lock because that was Professor Price's favorite. So if he says, say, a backhand strike, and I can get there from a forehand too, but let's start with backhand. I'm gonna block that one, and as soon as I come in, I'm gonna step in, jam that against his waist so he loses his balance, and then finish him off, right? Bam. However you wanna finish him off. The idea is it's jamming into that waist. So, okay, he comes in with a good strike, wham, okay? I'm gonna block that and I'm gonna go come in and jam that to his back of his waist, okay? I'm not grabbing him there, I'm just forcing it against his waist and then finish him off, bam. That's two lock. The idea is that it's going right in here. So if he's standing there, if I push in that, boom, see how his hip goes out? That's where I'm jamming that, his own hand against that waist. Typically it's on that side, you can do it on every side. You can actually do it across the shoulder, but you wanna do it down into their body so you steal their balance. I'm also stepping on his toe at the same time. That keeps him in place and it makes the effect of the two locky even more powerful. 
So that's the jamming into the hem, so two lock. For clipping against me, let's show you a few. Normal clipping places, um, Professor did this, Nicopa Balintawak does this, and again, this is more corto range because I can touch him with my hand or the butt of my stick. So either hip or right shoulder, sometimes left shoulder are the typical places. There's other places too, but that's a start. If he comes on this side, it's easier to show what I want to do here. So if he comes with a backhand strike, boom. when I'm going here, I can actually come in with my entry as I clip at the same time. So if I come in here, I'm going to hit with the hand and I hit. So he either blocks that or gets hit. If he doesn't block it, so don't block it, he, he got hit, right? If he does block it, then I'm bam, and he's mine. I trapped him, okay? So I'm grabbing here, but the idea is I'm doing that two lock right there. Okay, smashing that back into him. So again, he comes with a backhand strike, boom, I go in there, and I strike that by that ear. If he blocks, then I pull and hit, okay? So I'm a happy camper. This is a here. He, he could tag me a little bit. It's not going to do anything to me, okay? So there's not much he can do there. Backhand strike on this side. He comes in with a backhand strike. I'm blocking, okay? I want to do the clip to this hip, okay? So it's going to go in here, and boom. So it's clipping there, and I can do the same thing. This clips there. Boom, I could do the obstruction removal, bam, like we did before, that's Remy. One more one, if he comes to the backhand strike here, if I pop this down here, step in and clip to that, sh that hip, and hit with that hammer fist right at the same time, he can block, then he's gonna eat that poke. So uh, the follow-ups are interesting. What I'm trying to do is tell you why we're clipping. The follow-ups are not what I'm teaching here. The, is the clipping to set those up. So back in strike again, boom, I pop in, shoop, okay? That's one, okay? Boom, I go here, boom, and strike, okay? <laughs> so again, I'm stepping on his toe. So the idea is what? We have grabbing, brute force. We have throwing to the side while we're attacking. Um, we've got pushing against himself to to sacrifice here, that's two lock. And then we have clipping against myself, okay? Simple one again, he does a backhand strike, I go here. I pull this to my shoulder as I hit him with the butt. So that was my that was my attack, I'm, my clipping is right here. I do the attack simultaneous. If he gets hit, he gets hit. If he blocks, then I come underneath, clear and hit. If he doesn't block, I mean if he blocks a di and I want to do a different way, I could still do this obstruction removal. Sorry. You got grabbing, which sets up your disarms. You've got uh, throwing to the sides, so control by inertia. You've got pushing against him, so you control and you're jamming against the hip to steal his balance, so control by, by folding. Um, and you've got catching against your own body. He has to deal with that weight. There's one other aspect of that control. If I go here, he's a backhand strike. If I come over and I pull him to me, right? That punch could come, but that's fine. I'm gonna block that. But if it doesn't come, the point is I've got this hip on his hand. For a second there, I can he feels that hip and I can put pressure in and strike. He's still there because he feels that pressure. It's a little bit of a fake out, but you'll be surprised how much that works. So play with that and see how, see how it feels with your partners uh, when you can have partners or using your family. Next time, we'll cover something different, uh, and it's good to be back making these again. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and definitely hit the bell for notifications, and uh, we'll see you later. Take care.